Well, hello YouTube. It's been a minute since I made a Photoshop tutorial, but I'm back at it. Um, it's May 2020, near the end of May 2020, and I'm inside a lot anyways because we're in sort of a recommended quarantine for coronavirus right now. So I figured I would make this tutorial. So today we are going to make a photo that looks somewhat like this, or at least go over the techniques to do this from a photo that starts out like this. Um, so this is sort of a digital problem solving tutorial. We're gonna go over combining different little pieces of different photos to sort of uh, create the best uh, product photo like in different areas, you know, locally. We're gonna use masks, we're going to make the lightsaber blade itself. Um, and then I'm gonna go over, you know, so how to replace the background and how to shoot the product on set so it's easier to replace the background in Photoshop if you're going that route. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I already made these photos. Uh, just a few different variations here playing around with colors. Um, this is one I made today, which I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I already know some things I could do better next time, like more diffused lighting and a little bit brighter lighting around this area, but I'm pretty happy with it for sort of a test shoot. The photo that I started with to make those photos looked like this. Um, so I actually had like sort of this diffuser uh, bag beneath the lightsaber, but today we're going to be editing this series of photos, which is just a piece of white poster board and then a piece of black foam board as my background. Um, my light setup here is pretty simple. Uh, basically, what I have is I have a uh, tungsten light over here it's like very golden very warm but that's just what i had and then so that's bouncing off of a gold uh reflector um oops that's right here and it's reflecting this gold light on the side of the lightsaber and then i also i also have this blue uh little rgb light it was 40 dollars on amazon and I'm moving this light, I held it and I moved it up and down uh, in each photo to sort of get um, blue highlights on different parts of the lightsaber. Um, so it's something that you can only really do this way. Uh, and then I have a third light which is over here on the left and it's a really bright um, LED light and it's partially diffused and that was most of the light um, so it's sort of a fill light and it's sort of a directional light from the left shining down like this so that was my setup I just shot it on my kitchen table pretty simple um, so let's go ahead and get into it why not we'll go ahead and get rid of that so first off I Got all of these images in here by going to File, Scripts, uh, Load Files into Stack, and then I browsed and I found my files, and then I clicked Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images, and that's where we left off. And then I named over here on my layers, I named the pieces of each layer that I wanted to use. Um, so for example, this photo, I really like how the background looks. I like how um, this little strip of light looks down here. I like how the left bottom side of the lightsaber looks. So we're gonna use that from this photo. And I'll probably just throw it on the bottom. Um, let's see, this photo, I liked how this area looks. So for example, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna alt click on the mask button when I have this photo selected. It's gonna make it invisible. And now with my white brush, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to, on the mask, not on the layer, on the mask, I'm gonna go in and paint 
the areas that I want to keep from that photo that I have selected. So I just paint it in really quick and easy, even using my mouse for this. That area that I want to keep. So now I have this, which I think looks a little bit cooler. It's really up to you, but I like how it looks. So, and obviously these techniques can be applied, by the way, to any product photo shoot that you've done. It doesn't, obviously, it doesn't have to be a lightsaber from Star Wars. It doesn't have to be anything. This applies to everything. Okay. Now up here I have a photo where I really like, I kind of like how the ground looks actually, so I might save some of that. And then I also liked uh, this strip of light, which gives some definition to sort of this cylindrical shape and uh, some of these details here. So I'm gonna go ahead, alt click on the mask uh, button down here. And now I'm gonna go in with my brush, oops, that's black, with white and paint in areas that I like. Simple as that. Now I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this tutorial because I kind of already did this. I'm just showing you guys, but obviously you want it to look better. You would you know, zoom way in, use a drawing tablet, and sort of alternate between painting with white and black to get exactly what you want. Um, but again, I'm not spending that much time on this. I don't need it to look perfect. I just want it to look really good for the purposes of this tutorial. Uh, if this is going to a client, I would want everything to look flawless because that's how I do it. You hire me to do a job, I'm gonna do a good job. That's how it is. All right, so it's looking pretty good. Okay, here we have a photo. Let's see what parts of this we like. Um, I like how the background looks. Ooh, let's see. What if we go back in here and we paint in the floor? That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's looking pretty awesome already. Holy crap. This is pretty cool. This is probably one of the most fun things that you can do in Photoshop. So next photo, moving on. I like the background and I like the details up here. Uh, so we're gonna add that in. So up here, I'm gonna paint in those details. Need to be a bit more zoomed in so we can see what we're doing. Okay. Cool. It's pretty good. Um, what if we paint in the background? Okay, Photoshop. Chill out. <laughs> Let's see. So you could obviously darken these images down uh, so the background's totally black, or you can sort of save it, brighten it up, and make it dark blue. I kind of like how the dark blue looks. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna recover some of these details. If somebody knows why my Photoshop is making this noise, please tell me. I'm on Windows 10. Okay, that's pretty awesome. This is exciting. Guys, here's a little trick that you can do. If you want to make a temporary adjustment layer so you can see what you're editing better and make your edits better and then turn it off before you save the photo, it's really easy to do. Go up to your adjustments uh, panel, click on curves. Add a curves layer above everything, everything, and brighten it up. And we'll probably brighten up the photo anyways. But I'm just going to brighten this way up so that I can see what I'm doing. I can see the differences in the color here a bit better if I brighten this up. So you can see this line here that we don't want, this like blue shape right there. See that? That difference in color? You can't really notice that with the adjustment layer off. So if 
you're making a photo, you know, you're professionally editing a photo like this, um, it's worth taking some time to examine it with a really harsh curves adjustment layer and just see, you know, what you've been sloppy on. So for example, here, I can tell, I need to just go in and soften this up a bit. Sorry about the noise. Or I can go the opposite way with it. It's whatever. It's whatever. I'm gonna put my opacity on like 15% so I can sort of smooth this out. Cool. Yeah, it's looking better. So we were here. Now we're here. Let's look at that without the curves layer on. Um, oh, we can't do that. Whatever. All right, what's next? Now we have this photo. I like this area. I like the background and I like the details up here. So with that in mind, in mind, sorry. Let's go here, get our white brush. Start painting in those details, dog. Okay. So I forgot to align my layers um, like by hand. So it looks like we're dealing with some alignment issues. I'm gonna try and fix some of that now. Okay, whatever. Yeah, that's something that just takes time as well. But we don't have all day when we're filming tutorials. What do you think this is? Perfection? Well, maybe. Maybe. Okay, so now I'm painting in the blue of the background. And if I wanted to be more detailed, I could use the lasso tool or better yet, the pen tool and select the area that I'm painting. And uh, it, would, it would be, you know, more fine tuned. But I'm using a soft brush and this is going on Instagram. And you'll see it on your phone, you know? So it doesn't have to be perfect for this specific photo. But this is for a client. Better get it perfect. You better. There we go. Aha! That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Still lining stuff up. It's so weird. That is so strange. But whatever. Okay. We're getting there. So let's look at what we have done so far. And I'm going to go ahead and crop in just a little bit to clean this up. Okay. So. We didn't use this layer at all. We started with this layer that we liked this part of. 
and we added this layer. Pretty cool. That's not quite aligned. Okay, getting closer. Wow, that's crazy. What is happening? This photo, man, it's happening. Okay, some little adjustments there to get it to fit better. Actually, this is so strange, guys. Apparently, I need to stop moving my product in between photos because then this happens. You don't want this to happen. Next, we added the floor and other details on the left side of the product. Then we added some background color. We added some details up here. Looks pretty nice. Then we added right hand details and right hand side background color. Looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's fill in see if this will work. I want to fill in my background. Okay, let's try this then. So I'm using the clone stamp tool and the paintbrush tool as well. And I'm just going to fill in the parts of the background that we are missing. So the reason I'm not cropping in is because I don't know how I'll use this photo. So let's say this photo is going on Instagram in Instagram stories, 16 by 9 ratio. Well, then I can just crop in to, you know, something like this and get it exact, and that's fine. But what if this photo is going on my website and I want it to be like widescreen format, you know? Um, in that case, I want to preserve all of the screen real estate that I can, just in case I don't want to zoom in, because then you start seeing flaws and losing detail and stuff. So, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to stick with the crop that's already here. Just do a little painting, make everything look nice and pretty. You don't know how to use the clone stamp tool go watch a tutorial on YouTube about it this is meant to be a bit more of an advanced tutorial it's just what it is so now I'm painting with the clone stamp tool at 20% opacity just to sort of smooth out all of this could even come in here with like a brush tool or something at like 15% opacity and paint oops you know paint something like that just to lighten it up um doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. What happens if I blur this? Okay. So I think it's about time to add the lightsaber blade itself. Because that's always fun. 
It's one of the most fun parts. Uh, excuse me, clone stamp tool. What are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. Brush tool to the rescue. Okay. Good enough for now. So, how do you add a lightsaber? Blade. Well, let's make a new folder and call it Blade. Just stay organized. Um, oh, by the way, we can look at our curves layer, see how our edits are looking. You can see, you know, we have some we have some areas to work on. So, new layer, empty. Get the pen tool. Shortcut for that is P. Then, put your steak on the oven, stove top, piping hot. No. Come over here. Draw a straight line. Try and get this the right curve and everything. And we're going to go over here. Oh, that's not good enough. I'm control clicking on my points, by the way, to move them around. Make sure everything looks perfect. You want this to be really lined up. It's kind of hard to see because we're working with a blue mask on a blue background. So sorry about that. OK. I think I'll add another point. Control click. Control click. OK. Go in here, selection, zero feather, OK. Hit W, hit select and mask, feather it, shift the edge. Maybe did two percent. Now fill it with white. Looking pretty good for a first layer. Go down to effects, outer glow, pick the color of your lightsaber. Ha, ha, ha. I think I want color kind of like that. You can set it to screen or you can set it to linear dodge. I'm going to set mine to screen. We're not done yet. I'm just getting started. Actually, I know Star Wars fans will hate me because this lightsaber is Anakin, so it's supposed to be blue, but I kind of want a more teal color. Okay. That's your first layer. Now, Control J or Command J, duplicate that layer. Now, go up to Blur, Gaussian Blur. You can do a radius of like three pixels, but uh, the radius of the blur will change depending on how big of an image you're working on. I duplicated the layer again, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now, I'm going to bring the radius up a little bit more. So, what we're doing is we're softening this edge here. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. 30 pixels. Duplicate the layer again. Gaussian blur. Maybe like 60 pixels. I don't know. We can go in here and turn off some of these layers if we need to. Or just turn off the outer glows from those layers. get it looking good. Use your own judgment. For this one, I'm going to go outer glow, bring it way up. I 
think actually I'm going to blur it a lot more. There we go. Something like that. I want this one to really fill in the shadows around there. I, sh I shut off a couple of these layers so we get a more clean line. Because if I add these back in, it doesn't look as clean. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. That's looking pretty good. You want it to be a little fuzzy, but not too much. Um, let's see. What next? Next, take a sip of your coffee. Okay. Guys, this is looking pretty good. So let's go over a couple more techniques, a couple of ideas. First, actually, I'm going to go ahead and here and sort of color correct this. Well, correct the brightness of it and the curves. So let's say, guys, let's say that you wanted to replace this background with a solid color in Photoshop. What you would do if you wanted to do it right and you want it to look perfect, you would go in your images here and you would get the pen tool and you would literally go in here and you would mask out this whole thing you would go way in I'm at like 500% zoom right now and you would just go through and this takes some time you get better at it as you practice more. And you would literally just go through and um, mask out each little area. You can use other tools. You can use the lasso tool, but it doesn't give you the same control. You know, you can use the quick selection tool, and sometimes that will work good and sometimes it won't. You can use the magic wand tool. Both of those are up here, by the way. And sometimes they work well and sometimes they don't, but you'll almost always have to go back in and use a pen tool to mask in or out some areas anyways. So why not just get it right the first time? So you would go through like that. You'd go, you know, you'd take your time. You'd take half an hour or something. You'd take 10 minutes. You'd go around the object. You know, you get it real detailed. Go up here. Selection, click OK, go to the quick select tool, hit select and mask. You know, zoom in, feather it, maybe one pixel, shift the edge in, shift it in, not out, shift it in just a little bit if you need to. And Hit, you know, output, new layer with layer mask, whatever. Then let's pretend that we just have this layer, right? And then you'd make a new layer, put it below your product, you know, click a color, select a color. Let's say we wanted to do a teal color. Again, I don't know, lay blue, whatever. And then you brush it in or you control delete to put the color in the background. This is only going to look good if you take your time and you make it look good. Um, you know, you, you really have to take your time with it. Let's see, let's go back. Let's go back before we started all of this crap. Okay. So, the best way to do this is, the best way to replace a background is to do it on set, actually. If you can, why not just do it on set? So you could have your product in front of two walls, or two different pieces of poster board, or two different backdrops, one on the right side, one on the left side, or however you're going to do it, um, and take the photo that way. I didn't think to do that when I was on set, but you live and you learn. But that way you skip all of the Photoshop, right? Um, and you just do this process that we already did with like the light painting or whatever. 
Uh, let's see. If you're going to replace a background with a light color, then I would probably shoot the, the product against a white background or a background that's as close colored to the color that you're going to replace it with. So if you're replacing it with dark green, maybe shoot it on dark gray because that's going to give you the most flexibility in Photoshop. And if you see, uh, if you make mistakes, you won't see them as easily. Um, so I think that about covers it for this tutorial. I really just wanted to go over masking in different sections of our product with light painting and making it look pretty. Um, so as you can see, we started with this and we ended up with this today. So quite a big difference. Um, I mean, this is, I would not post this on Instagram at, other than a behind the scenes photo. This definitely look really nice on my Instagram once I clean up the background a little bit more. It will also be pretty easy at this point to come in here with the brush tool and just, uh, whoops. Why does my Photoshop do this? Come in here with the brush tool and sort of paint and clean this stuff up. Um, clean up the background a little bit and flatten out some of these like weird shadows in the background and stuff like that. Let's see, maybe like 15%. Just take your time with it. Obviously, I didn't take my time with it today, but that's okay. And then go in here. You know, something like that. You could also mask around your lightsaber, your product. <laughs> mask around your lightsaber. Mask around your product and get it perfect, but that's a little like 30 second fix just to make it look slightly more clean. Um, let's see. So let's say we're going to crop this for Instagram stories. Go in here, go to nine by 16, the crop tool, line it up, get it looking all nice. Make sure it's all centered. Something like that looks pretty good. Hit enter. And now I can save this for Instagram. So for Instagram, it doesn't need to be that big. Uh, I'm doing a control shift S, or sorry, I'm doing control alt I to resize the image. So we can do height, I don't know, 2300 pixels will be a pretty small file size. And then control shift S to save. Now I notice there's some more problems in here. We would also need to go in and fix all of these like uh, little specks of dust or whatever this is. Um, what I would do for that is create a new layer like I just did, hit J to bring up the spot, um, what's it called? I forget. Spot healing brush tool. And then just go through and paint all of the areas that need to be fixed. You can also use the clone stamp tool and I will use both of these tools. I'll use a mix of both of them. Sometimes this tool is faster than the clone stamp tool, but the clone stamp tool gives you more manual control over these little areas that you're fixing. Uh, so sometimes you'll need to use that. By the way, if you don't have a drawing tablet, that is one of the most uh, necessary purchases, I would say. If you spend a lot of time in Photoshop, it will really help you um, to speed up your workflow. So I would recommend doing that. Also make this clone stamp layer above or below your curves and everything or else you'll make the mistake that I just made and uh, it will get weird if you start rearranging your layers around. Hope that makes sense. But you know, whatever. You always have to make at least 20 mistakes in a tutorial or else it doesn't count. So I think I've rambled long enough. You guys get the gist. If you have any questions, hit me up at Josh in the studio 
at Instagram, or I will put a link in the video description as well. Um, also, if you have a business inquiry, Instagram, honestly, is still the best way to reach me. But you can also check out my website at joshuabatesphotography.com. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.